scouting report. 13-7-21-82. How are you today? Me? Oh, I'm great. Why do you ask? Does it seem like things aren't going great? Maybe? Not, you know, ideal. <laughs> well, for the record, my plan was perfect. Basically. Which might make one ask the question. Well, gee, Callie, if your plan was so perfect, then how is it that you're flying down the highway right now at breakneck speed with an angry zombie begging to run in your trunk? And to that, I might respond... Well, actually, it doesn't matter how I respond because this is a hypothetical conversation I'm having with a recorder. An inanimate device. One that mercifully can't judge me. A trait that I greatly appreciate right now. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah, right, the, the plan. I caught sight of a scaver camp after setting out for the daily westward trudge with my new friend, Zombie Girl, which up until today was going pretty great. I'm happy to report that uh, ever since our first little dust-up, there have only been two instances of an attempted reflexive biting. Both of them were somehow deflected by a stern talking to. Wild, right? I just kind of throw in the kind of harshly shaming tone you give a bratty kid or a misbehaving puppy. Yeah, stops her dead in her tracks. Huh. I wonder if maybe we could have tried that as a collective society during the original outbreak. If we gave that a shot at all. Maybe even once, just try the old bad dog treatment before the gun bros started shooting and the government began dropping killer robots on the problem. But we didn't. But we didn't. But I mean, that, that's a whole different shitstorm than the one I'm currently experiencing. So let's get back to how we got into this mess. God, I'm all over the place. My thinking was that nomads like the scab group I was talking about, they get around. To get around, you need to have cars, or at least a few sturdy wagons and some livestock. So I brought the zombie into an old convenience store not too far away from the camp, I checked her in there, pretty much just tied her to an exposed support that didn't look like it was going to bring the roof down with a tug, and prepared to meet the group without my unliving entourage. As one might imagine, she appreciated that not at all, but honestly, bringing a zombie to your resource negotiation session is a bold move. And I'm just not ready to even try to explain. Right, so, long story very short, I met with the scav boss. A guy named Richter, who I really wish I could say was a super chill dude. He's all smile and jokes, but I see him for what he is. I mean, leaders out in the wasteland are usually one of two types. The tough, leader-by-necessity sort that drifts to the top of the pack, tries to make the best of a bad situation for their people. Or the cult of personality, control freak, that just lives to put people between themselves and the truth. That truth, of course, being that they're the worst possible versions of themselves, and finding a bunch of people who need them validates what an actual piece of shit they've become. This guy? Absolutely the second. So, I make a deal for some of the remaining top-shelf supplies I got in my rucksack. Cologne, vacuum-sealed ration packs, and a canister of shine... You know, in retrospect, maybe the deal was a little too good for what I was offering. But, you never know. Maybe my damsel in distress shtick had worked. Okay, all I know is that soon after, I was on the road again in the driver's seat of a kind of junker that would definitely have been chosen last in a game of kickball. If cars had playground games, that is. I mean, having to drive on a wheeled vehicle is a pretty big downgrade for my spinner, but this, an old Jetta that clearly hasn't seen any real love since the world ended... Pulled together by duct tape, rust, and a more than considerable amount of hope. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I was off to pick up Zombie Girl and put as many miles between the Benton Harbor evac site and Golden Gate as possible. A little bit of wrangling, and soon enough I managed to get my zombie into the trunk and... Hey, I'm gonna go ahead and stop you right there, Callie. Yup, it's me. Oh, your girl, Hannah. The zombie... You know, that you kidnapped and shoved in your trunk? I think it's time for a little pop quiz about boundaries and appropriate friendship behavior. <sighs> True or false, it's totally acceptable to trick your zombie friends into becoming living or uh, unliving but still very intimate cargo or to leave them tied up in abandoned places. <sighs> Surprisingly enough, it's false! Now, you might be thinking, well, what if it's only for 10 minutes? Or they're already dead anyway, right? What's the worst that could happen? And to that, I say, maybe you totally deserve to be chewed on! Just 
Just a bit. <sighs> That's right. I said it. And I mean it. So maybe remember that. The next time you decide to lead us into an ugly old store with the promise of an adventure, only then to tie me to a pole and leave me alone again. <sighs> and I'll remember that maybe you... Maybe you just suck. <sighs> Hurt feelings aside, I should probably maximize the time that we have together and, you know, actually fill you in on some of the important parts that are obviously going to take her like a hundred years to get to, if we're really going to rely on those stupid scouting reports she does. You know, the ones where she talks to nobody about us in a way that makes me feel like we're completely underestimated. Like, um, hello, I'm right here, right here in this very room. Definitely understanding you, but completely unable to communicate anything at all. Ugh, I'd be more mad about it, but really, oh, look at Blamer. I mean, look at us, listener. We chase butterflies and stare at spider webs for hours. Who'd ever believe there's still a woman up here, trapped in this zombie's head? So, how about I just hit play on the old not so way back machine so you can experience the standoff for yourself in unliving color. Oh, and if you're looking for old Hannah in this scene, just remember she stuffed unceremoniously into the trunk like baggage! Which is a shame, because I'm sure it was really cool, but you know, one minute you're the hero fighting killer robots like a knight or a superhero of some kind, and the next, <laughs> trunked. Roll the stupid clip. I'm sorry, baby girl. This is for your own good. And mine. Mostly mine. What the actual fuck is this? Stop meeting like this, don't we? No idea what you're talking about, Richter. I thought we had a deal, fair and square. Business all concluded and I got on my way like we said. Did I forget something? Or is there a reason you're holding a crowbar? <laughs> not at all, darling, not at all. It's just that, to be honest, I found it kind of strange that a lone outsider walked into my camp with a big bag of supplies looking to make a deal for a lousy old car. Appeal to our mercy for a fair deal. One where you said that everything you owned, everything, was in that duffel of yours. I wasn't lying. Like I said, lost everything in a crash outside k -Zoo. Yeah, well, turns out that wasn't quite true, was it? First thing that tipped me off was you drove back the same way you came. To me, that sounds like you left something behind. Seems that hunch was right. And I'm always right. I don't... I don't get it. There's nothing... So what you stowed away there? That little thing making all that racket. Oh, the, the zombie? Look, it, it's not what it seems. Let me explain. No, no, no need. I get it. I, I really do. She's a beauty. Almost couldn't believe my eyes when I saw you push her into that trunk of yours. A real moaning, groaning, goddamn brain-eating zombie. I haven't seen one of them in over five years. Feral as fuck, aren't they? Okay, you caught me, Detective Richter. I'm a scout. For Golden Gate, okay? I'm trying to take her back home. Now, why would you want to go and do a thing like that? Seems like a terrible idea, if you ask me. Lots of things can go wrong between here and San Francisco. There's... she could be different. No, she is different. She's been following me for days now. Could have tried to eat me a hundred times, but she hasn't. That's worth somebody smarter than you or I having a look, right? We have scientists and... Look, I don't know, maybe they could use her to see how this virus has obviously evolved. This zombie girl, she responds. Almost like a human. <laughs> really now? Did you teach how to do tricks? Roll over? Shake a paw? Beg? Back in the day, we knew people that tried to tame them, you know. Put them to some use, saw a kind of humanity in them. Like I said, this one's different, asshole. In my humble experience, no matter how different it was, 
never worked out the way it ought to. To tell you the truth, that was damn good for business. But you see, the zombie hunting game's all but dried up now. And good old boys like us gotta resort to hunting down the odd, wandering criminal. If you know what I mean. Relieving them of their stolen goods. Setting them right. Sometimes I miss the old days. Killing zombies for upstart communities. Now that was a lot more simple. A lot more ethical, too. Wouldn't you say so? Don't you think it's a little more ethical to kill a zombie than just some stranger on the road? Shit. You, you guys aren't scavs, are you? Never said we were. Got no taste for picking through junk, haggling over scrap. Now, why don't you pop that trunk and help us stop you from making the biggest fucking mistake of your pretty little life? Whoa, hey, okay, okay. I really got my back against the wall on this, so all right, I guess. Fuck it, you win. I'll pop the trunk. I'll pop the, the trunk. And maybe this. Ah, fucking flashbang! Shit! Flashbang ah. grenade! <laughs> oh, yeah. We're big fans of non-violent conflict resolution up here in Golden Gate. Me, though? Well, I'm not above it in the slightest. <laughs> Killing zombies is good ethical work. Check me out, I'm a big dangerous man with a crowbar and a big ugly truck with spikes on it. <laughs> Too bad a girl came along and stuck a knife in my tires. Oh, oops. Silly me. <laughs> there goes another one. Oh, God damn it, girl. You can't run. We'll find you. We'll fucking find you! Maybe. But you're gonna have to do it without these, won't you, fuckface? <laughs> so, that's how I ended up in this definitely disgusting trunk. Thankfully, my sense of smell hasn't actually worked since zombification, so I can mercifully only imagine... Uh, actually, I was about to say imagine the smell, which is... Even as I say it, one of the least favorite intrusive thoughts I've ever had. I mean, let's go ahead and face it. Anyone who says a thing like that isn't going to be talking about the scent of flowers in the morning glade, right? It's all B.O.-filled locker rooms and dive bar basement washrooms. Ugh, imagine the smell! So, I guess it's time for the bad news. I kind of forgot that you actually needed to hear the end of Kelly's report to get the full picture of things when I rolled the tape back there. That's, uh, that's my bad. So, let me make it up to you with a story. Once upon a time... Nah, <laughs> I'm just kidding. We already did that gag back in the first episode. Anyway, Kelly might have admitted that she got a little carried away back there, but... I mean, oh, who could even blame her, right? Seriously, you heard that guy. He was gonna... Well, I don't know if you can actually kill someone who's already dead, but I suppose, yeah, he was gonna kill us. And then she was all like, in Golden Gate, we frown on violence, but me, I'll totally fu fu fudge your stupid face with my big old boot. And also, I'll stab your tires and steal your keys for good measure. Insult to injury. <sighs> <laughs> the film cut out before she stole a jerry can full of gas from them as well. It wasn't until Kelly was about uh, three miles away that she realized there was a gross human ear dangling from said keychain, so that went out the window pretty fast. I know I've been joking around, but these guys are actually really bad, listener. Back when there were still hordes, zombie hunters like Richter used to mow us down by the hundreds. If you remember, I told you that sometimes when a zombie gets hurt too badly, their body forgets how to human, right? Sometimes we develop weird defenses, or sprout extra limbs, or grow to ridiculous sizes like a comic book villain born in the darkness. <laughs> An old, active zombie horde could be a really scary thing with all sorts of... Uh, I guess we can call them evolutions, because calling them mutations is pretty insensitive to all the actual mutants out there. It didn't matter though. These zombie hunters always had a way of dealing with us. The more dangerous the pack, the bigger the thrill for some of these guys. They'd, they'd never stop, listener. Not until either they'd eliminated the horde or become a part of it. 
which means whether she knows it or not, this isn't going to go away. They'll follow us all the way to Golden Gate if they have to. And when they catch up, we'll have to do something. If I'm even ever allowed out of this trunk again! Ugh. Oh, I've got to figure something out between now and whenever things get worse. Because they're definitely gonna. But how do you earn someone's trust if they don't even know you're a real person? Ugh. Welcome back, listener. We're not gonna lie if Hannah's right about Richter and the kind of man he is. Well, we're in a little bit of trouble, aren't we? I guess we can only hold on and hope that everything works out just fine. Until then, An Apocalypse has been brought to you by Red Fathom Entertainment and stars Amanda Hufford as Hannah, Will Hanford as Bogart, Jordan Rudolph as Mel, Tom Schock as Richter, and Abigail Turner as Callie. This episode was written and sound designed by Damien Sidlow, with sensitivity reading and editing by Max Shepard. We'd love it if you'd stop by and show us some love with maybe a follow on socials. You can find us on Twitter at Hanapoctical, and now on Instagram for the first time as Red Fathom Ant. If you like what you hear so far and would like to support the show, as well as other future productions like it, you can be one of the first to do so by visiting Red Fathom over on Patreon. Patreon is, of course, a service that allows you to pitch a few bucks to us monthly to help keep this show going. Every dollar goes to paying our talent and improving the show, helping us bring stories like this one out from post-apocalyptia and straight into your ear holes. Enough of that, though. Until next time, listener. <laughs>